You are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night because you are my help. I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand holds me. Those who want to kill me with be destroyed, and they will go down. I will cling to you. to sing with us this morning uh, because that's what we came here to do we came here to worship I'd like you to join me in our worship today as we sing uh, we fall down we fall down we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus Happy Sabbath, everyone. Oh, wow, that was horrible. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everybody. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for visiting with us this morning, coming to Elevate. I don't know about you all, but I'm so thankful that God gave us the Sabbath. We go through so much throughout the week with, with school and with work, and God gives us this time to spend with him and give us a whole day. So thank you all for coming and visiting with us at Elevate this morning. Uh, our tradition here is to have a question every morning, well, every Sabbath morning, to let us think about something throughout the service. So the question should come up here on the screen. What does it mean to rest? What does it mean to rest? So keep this in mind throughout the service this morning. And now our scripture reading will be done by Andrew. Morning, everybody. This morning we're going to be reading uh, from Matthew. Matthew 11, 28 uh, to 30. Uh, then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Today is actually um, our program for now. It's one of my favorite parts in the, in the program. It's prayer time for church family. And I had read last night, it said in the book of Steps to Christ, uh, the privilege of prayer. And it says, prayer is, the opening, prayer is the opening to the heart to God as to a friend. And uh, my question for you today is, who, you, do you remember your best friend? Many of you, maybe you came with your best friend today. And, um, you, know, when you, see, you know, when people see you, and, you know, they ask, uh, where's your friend? Or maybe you eat as much in their house as they do in yours. Or, you know, maybe when, when, uh, when, actually, when, um, you know, when you're actually down and out and you need somebody to call and you're just like, man, who's this one person I can call to? Um, and you have that one friend. Does anyone have a friend like that? I don't know about you, but I have a friend like that. And I want to tell you today that, that, um, that God wants to be your best friend. That uh, he wants you to communicate to him, um, and God wants to talk to you. So at this time, I'd like to invite you. Um, I'll give you 30 seconds to a minute just to have your own prayer, wherever you are. Uh, your, ha your, um, your eyes are um, closed and your heads are bowed. And as you pray, uh, just pray to God and ask him and just thank him for, uh, for being a best friend. And I'll close off in a word of prayer. Father God, Lord, uh, Lord, your name is, is great. Lord, your name is Yahweh, Lord, and God, you're a God that is worthy to be praised. And Father God, Lord, we just come here today, uh, Lord, humbly before your throne, boldly, Lord, asking, Lord, for your love and your mercy and your grace. That's new every morning, Father, and Lord, this is two weeks, Lord, into school, and uh, Lord, wearing these masks, and Lord, it's, it's, a new, um, it's a new thing, and God, we just ask... Lord, that we just, um, that you just guide us, Lord, in our academics, in our studies. Father God, that you just give us um, knowledge, Lord, give us wisdom. Uh, but most importantly, God, help us to reflect you in all that we say and do. God, help us to walk in your light. And Lord, may it be more of you and less of us, Father. Uh, we thank you so much for the opportunity, Lord, to come into your house, Lord, to give you praise. Father God, to give you glory and all the honor. Uh, Lord, just, um, just go before us, Lord, bless the speaker. Lord, may you just go before him, Lord, and Lord, may it be your words and not his. And Lord, we just thank you so much for all that you do, for your love. And we just thank you for being a God that sits high, Lord, and reaches low to pick us up from whatever we're struggling with, Father God. Uh, Lord, we thank you for just being a brother that sticks closer than a friend. And Lord, for just loving us unconditionally, Lord, just um, guide us today, Lord, through the Sabbath. But most importantly, Lord, prepare our hearts and our minds for your second coming so that we may be ready, Father God. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
so much, Adam and Andrew, Roly and Josie. Wasn't that beautiful? A little harmony right at the end. Thank you guys for taking us before the throne of grace. Well, welcome home. There's always room for one more. I'm glad you're here this morning. Hopefully on your way in, you got a little crinkly package that had a little black piece of cloth in it that you can wear proudly either today or through this week. It says Elevate on it. You can let your friends and your family know about where you hang out in this community of faith. If you haven't gotten one this morning, we'll have them available for you at the end. You can catch them at the doors. We would love to provide that mask for you today. Before we get rolling too far, turn to your neighbor real quick and say, Welcome home. And then turn to your other neighbor, maybe that same neighbor, and tell them there's always room for one more. Thank you for coming out this morning, and thank you for those of you that are joining us online and for uh, being a part of our online experience as well. And hey, Southwestern students, we're uh, two weeks into this. Freshmen, you've been here for three weekends. Uh, it's incredible to see God moving and working on our campus, in our church, and in our community. And we can praise the Lord that we've come back to gather in this community of faith, and so far, coronavirus can't touch us. We can praise the Lord for that. I know some of us have uh, come into contact with us. I know several people, even some on our campus that con contacted over the summer. They were able to overcome it. 
They were got well from it. But so far, our community has been protected and sheltered. And I thank you so much for being a part of that. And thank you so much for wearing your mask this morning to make sure that your neighbor is safe. Because we want to be able to continue to do this through at least November, right, students? And then at least until May, and then hopefully until Jesus comes back, we get to have the opportunity to come together and do this. Hey, real quick, uh, I mentioned it last week uh, about Sabbath school. Some of you may like, hey, what's Sabbath school? Well, in the Seventh-day Adventist faith tradition, uh, that's the time that we spend on a Saturday morning in study. So this is our corporate worship time. Then there's a study time. And I said, hey, we're going to be cooking something up for you uh, next week. So right after Elevate this morning at 1130, Elevate to finish around 11, at 1130, what time? 1130. 1130. Good, you're with me this morning. Over at the Moore building, which is the nursing building on campus, it's the newest building that Southwestern has built, you can head over there at 1130, and David and Christian are going to be leading out in um, a study session over um, the Sabbath school quarterly. So we invite you to come out to that. Hang out here for just a little bit afterwards. Make sure you uh, welcome those around you, get to know somebody new this morning, and then head on over. And you may be wondering, hey, how do I get to that building from here? Well, hopefully if it's not raining... Um, We've needed the rain this week, let me tell you. But hopefully it's not raining. You head out this side of the church, you head down this street, and it's the nice, big, new-looking building, two-story, that's kind of straight across from the guy's dorm that's on the left. So more halls on the right. uh, And there'll be some people over there to direct you where to go. So 11.30, study time, if you want to engage in that. We want you to come out and to be a part of that. Kyle read the question a moment ago, what does it mean to rest? Quarantine for some of us took on a form of rest. We got to escape from some of the regular tumble of life. But in the world that we're living in today, rest seems to be so far away. So I want you to think about this morning. What does it mean to rest? I invite you to bow your heads with me for a word of prayer as we begin. Father in heaven, we come seeking your presence. We know that these are not the only four walls where we can come and meet you. You inhabit many spaces. You inhabit our hearts. But we as a community have set aside this time and this space to come and to worship together. We're doing that in faith, and we thank you for your protection and your working on our lives. God, this morning, as we hear the rain falling down on the roof, as we take a moment to open Scripture, I pray that this passage that we're going to look at today will transform our lives. Because, God, we need transformation. We need a word from you today because this week has been tough for a lot of us. This season has been tough for a lot of us. And so, God, we come seeking you. Thank you for showing up. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior. Question for you this morning. How many of you are tired? Anybody tired? Let me see those hands. Somebody's raising somebody else's hand, so take it as a cue. But here's the thing. I'm not talking about a tired that you stayed up too late last night in the dorm, those late night talks, those got to turn things in and stay up and do all that. I'm talking about the kind of tired that is soul eroding, dirt road plodding, mind numbing tired that comes from being stretched for long periods in a certain direction. Is anybody feeling that tired this morning? It's okay. This is a safe place where there's always room for more. There's a few of us here this morning. The past six months, of 2020. Can you believe that we are already in September? It feels like March 182nd, right? Something like that. It's September, and we're starting to stare down the barrel of the holiday season to realize that 2020 came in with a bang, and it's still burning hot, and we're about to go into 2021. Zoom, digital learning, remote work, physical distancing, masks. How many of you are tired? I know I am. You know, sometimes it seems hopeless, right? I teach a class over at Southwestern, and uh, it's on how to connect with people. And first week of class, we skipped class on Wednesday, and I told my students, hey, take some time to lay your syllabi out in front of you, lay out everything that you have for this semester, and give it over to God. 
And we came back the next week and we talked about it. And some people said, this was fantastic, this was great, this, this just helped me center, it helped me understand what my responsibilities are for this year, uh, and it was just a great time. But a couple other people raised their hands and they said, you know, that exercise was actually really challenging and I almost cried. Because the reality of it is, students specifically, those of us that, of, of us that are here that are, are working day jobs and you're providing for your family, the reality of it is, that after a while, things start to add up. Pile of dirt upon pile of dirt upon bucket of water, and it gets mixed up, and it gets muddy, and it gets messy. But what if I told you that there's a cure for our tiredness and our weariness? What would you say to that? Now we're all looking for a vaccine for the virus that's floating around, but what if there's a cure for the virus that seems to ebb at our society, the go, 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 go. These next few weeks, we're going to look at the way of Jesus and see how his life and his way of living and his way of being can influence our own. So if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. We'll put it up on the screen for you there. Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30. Blake, I'm hearing a little bit of boom up here. I don't know if it's coming out there, but there's a little bit of boom. Matthew 11, 28 through 30, it says this. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. Who of you are weary and heavy laden? You've raised your hands, right? I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, isn't that a fantastic Bible verse? This is the kind of Bible verse that your mother or grandmother cross stitches and hangs in the bathroom, right? We know this Bible verse, and it sounds fantastic. We can quote it all the time. You may have learned it growing up. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened. We say, yes. Jesus says, I'll give you rest. We're like, yes, let's take some of that rest. And he says, take my yoke upon you. you say, what? What's a yoke? We're not talking about the yellow thing in the middle of an egg. We're talking about a tool and an instrument. But in this passage, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's talking to the, his, his followers that have come to him. And it's kind of set in a very interesting place in Matthew. Because just before these few verses, Jesus turns to his disciples and he says, Praise the Lord that God hasn't hidden his mysteries with the people of the world no, the way that you get to know God is through me. And then he makes the invitation, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Then he'll go on with his disciples, and they're walking through the grain field, and they pick grains off of the wheat. I guess that's what you call it, right? The stalks of wheat? I'm not a farmer, I don't know. Somebody can correct me. Just wheat? Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. I need my humbling today. I needed that. But they're, they're taking the grain off the wheat, I walk through the field, and guess what? It's Sabbath. And in Jewish culture, that was a no-no. You didn't work on the Sabbath. You did everything on the preparation day in order so that you could do basically nothing on the Sabbath. There's all these rules. And the Pharisees see that, and they call Jesus and his disciples out, and they say, you, that, that's, you can't do that. And Jesus says, hold on. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And guess what? I'm Lord of the Sabbath. And that term Sabbath is familiar to those of you that have grown up in a Seventh-day Adventist context. We've known that it's the seventh day of the week, and it's the time that we go to church, the time that we fellowship, the time that we rest, and don't wade into a pool above our calves. Or was it your ankles? I don't know. But Jesus is trying to tell us that, hey, there's something bigger going on, and this idea of Sabbath, there's something larger that I need you to catch because it's not just simply the end of the week and a day that we have to do things in order to serve. He says, no, it's a way of life. Because we could read this passage and it could say, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you Sabbath. We're going to unpack that a little bit more. The people that Jesus was talking to, his followers, they were oppressed by the Romans, who had a set of rules that they had to follow, and they were also oppressed by the local religion. It was the Pharisees who told them what they could do and when they could do it. And it's interesting that Jesus, talking to a group of people who's already overworked by a political system and overworked by a religious system, it's 
very apropos for today. He tells them to take up an instrument of work. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. That doesn't quite make sense because this overworked, tired group of people, Jesus is saying, hey, go pick up this yoke. It's like, what? And we don't necessarily understand that today. But in Jesus' time, as Jesus was a teacher, they would call him a rabbi. The term of a, a yoke or taking up a rabbi's yoke was a euphemism or a saying for living the way that the rabbi lived. And in case you don't know what a yoke looks like, I, I've got a, a picture of some oxen that are yoked together here. Uh, it's that crossbar that goes between those two cows. They're tied to it. And that can look like some, some shackles and that can look oppressive and like, oh, it looks like more work. But any of you that are into farming or have, have read about the history of farming know that a yoke is an incredible tool. Because it's a leveler between the strong cow and the weak cow, and they are both able to pull together in tandem and do ten times more together than they would apart. And Jesus' invitation in Matthew chapter 11, he says, take up my yoke, which means he's the one that's already strapped to the other side, and he says, I've got a spot here just for you, and the strong is united with the weak. To this group of people, he's not offering more work. He's offering them a different way to work. The world that we live in today can feel like a heavy yoke, doesn't it? There's burdens that we bear. There are things that we brought into this space this morning that only the closest people to us know that we bear those burdens, and maybe even the closest people to us don't know it. But we've come in heavy, we've come in tired, because the syllabi stack up, the expectations at work stack up. The idea of how to live a Christian life, it begins to stack up higher, higher, and higher. Jesus' invitation in Matthew chapter 11 is not for more work. There's a lot of preachers that'll stand up on a stage like this or lead a Bible study out and say, these are the things that you need to do in order to be a Christian, to be a follower of Jesus, to be a Seventh-day Adventist, and make sure that you check off these 28 fundamentals. Don't do this, do this, don't do that, do this, do that. But Jesus says, that's not how I operate. He says, that old, that, that oppressive system, let's go ahead and set that to the side. My yoke is different because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What does that mean for us today, though? How do we understand that, and how do we apply that to our lives? You know, we hear Jesus' invitation, right? Weary? Yeah, that's me. Rest? Please sign me up. I'm going to take a hike to the springs this afternoon or do some lay activities. Anybody? I'm going to take a nap. Springs, lay activities. You say, sign me up. I want in. Rest sounds fantastic. Can I sleep just a little bit more? We posted on our Instagram yesterday, and uh, we said, hey, how are you planning to rest this weekend? Somebody wrote in and said, uh, I'm going to take a nature, nature hike. Somebody said they're going to read, and somebody posted and said, I'm going to sleep. It's just one word, sleep. That's it. <laughs> I know some of you feel that, right? We say, Jesus, sign me up. I went in. But the challenge of it is that we often want the life, but we're not willing to adopt the lifestyle behind it, right? So we see that yoke that Jesus talks about, and it's like, yeah, that'd be fantastic, sign me up, great, I'm there, but we're not willing to put in the work to take up the easy yoke. Think about it this way for a moment. How many of you have, uh, have uh, tried New Year's resolutions? Okay, how many of you have succeeded at keeping those resolutions? I heard a once, and then everybody else's hands went down, right? It's September. How did your New Year's resolutions go this year? Uh, forget them, right, because quarantine, right? It doesn't matter. Yeah. So imagine this. We start off at the end, or we finish the year. We're going to finish 2020. And that goal, whatever we're trying to do, a lot of times it's fitness. It's personal health. I'm going to eat better this year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift weights. I'm going uh, to take care of my body. I'm going to be uh, there for my family a little bit more. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to live a better life. And we dream about the life that it looks like, the life that we want to live. But far too often we want the life 
but we're not willing to adopt the lifestyle behind it. Catch this, every system is perfectly designed to get the results that it gets. You right now in your life are getting the results you're getting because of the way that you're living. Good, bad, or indifferent, that's how it is. Jesus is offering an invitation to change up how we live. Imagine this year, you want to become a runner. And so every day you wake up in the morning and there's a few people that run around keen. And you find that that person, you find the spot that that person runs. You go and you take your camping chair, you park it down beside them. You say, I'm going to study this person. I'm going to know exactly when they come by, how fast they're going, what clothes that they're wearing, how I can become a runner. And you spend day after day after day. They pass by and you're taking notes. They pass by and you're taking notes. By the end of the year, will you become a runner? No. You'll know a lot about running, but you're not going to become a runner. Because in order to become a runner, you must take up the lifestyle of a runner. Up early in the morning running, you've got the shorts, the tank top, whatever it is. You're eating the things that runners eat. You're doing the things that runners do. Too often do we want the life, but we're not willing to take up the lifestyle. It's stacked against you. And you know, Albert Einstein's quoted with this saying, it's likely that it might not be him, but it's kind of cool to think it was. Uh, Definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And I make light of it with our New Year's resolutions. But could it be true in our devotional living and in our seeking after Jesus that we've fallen in love with the idea of following Jesus, but we have not put his way of life into practice? John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we fantasize sometimes about Jesus being the truth, right? The Seventh-day Adventist church has touted itself for its knowledge of the Bible and its understanding of, of theology and doctrine. But Jesus says, I'm the way. Before you can fully understand the truth, He makes an invitation to walk in the way because by walking in the way, you have a deeper understanding of the truth and then you can experience the life that you've been longing for. If you want to experience the life of Jesus, you have to adopt the lifestyle of Jesus. We may have lost sight of the fact that the way of Jesus is just that, a way of life. It's not just a set of ideas, which we call theology, or a list of do's and don'ts, which we could call ethics. It is, but it's so much more than that. Jesus, the truth, sometimes gets more attention than Jesus as the way. Ellen White puts it this way in book Desire of Ages when she talks about this passage that Jesus is is sharing with his disciples. When our will is swallowed up in the will of God and we use his gifts to bless others, we shall find life's burdens light. So continue on and say, he who walks in the way of God's commandments is walking in company with Christ in his lo- and his love, that's Jesus' love, the heart is at rest. So I want to make an invitation to you this morning. Could it be that we've fallen in love with the idea of who Jesus is and the idea of a set of beliefs and the idea of a church and we have not fallen in love with Jesus himself? That can be hard for some of you to hear, and if the shoe fits this morning, wear it. But recognize that you don't have to keep walking through life wearing a shoe that is not fit for your feet. Jesus offers a yoke that's custom fit for you. He's saying, sidle up next to me. Let's do this thing together. Jesus said, John chapter 16, verse verse 33, says, in the world you have tribulation. There should be a period there, I think. Because Jesus says, matter of fact, the life is going to be tough. Things are going to be difficult. Syllabi are going to stack up. Work expectations are going to stack up. Relationships are going to get sticky. It's going to be a difficult life. But he doesn't leave it there because he continues on. He says, but take courage. I have overcome the world. And Jesus offers his disciples in Matthew chapter 11, and he's offering it us to us today He's saying, the way the world is treating you, the way the world says that you have to work over, go, 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 sun up to sundown, to late in the night, to whatever is on your plate, Jesus says, I don't operate that way. 
you'll come to me when you're weary and you'll find rest. Because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want to invite you this morning to take up the yoke of Jesus, to take up the way of Jesus. We're going to be looking in the next few weeks about what that looks like specifically. How do I live the way of Jesus? How do I walk in the yoke of Jesus? How am I sidled up next to him, pulling the load that Jesus says is light, but it looks heavy? We're going to talk about that. I'll invite our praise team back up to lead us in a few more songs this morning. Isn't it true that our world seeks the easy life? Those are the, the people on Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat and I guess it's TikTok nowadays. Is that the new thing? I don't know. I don't have it. We see people day in and day out that look like they've got it easy. If I could only be like that person, if I could only have the body of that person, if I could have the money of that person, if I could have the fame of that person, I want to find the easy way to that. Jesus says, no, remember, the way up is down. Darkness gets transformed into life, and there's a new way to live. And that's what Jesus is offering to us today. We all have weights to bear. That's given. We walk through life carrying them. But Jesus offers us an invitation to say, I want to give you a different way to carry your burden. <laughs> There's no, uh, there's no payment wall. You don't have to subscribe to it. It doesn't cost 30 bucks. No. It's there. It's open for us to take up and to bear with Jesus. I invite you today. Come, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and Jesus will give you rest take his yoke upon you because his yoke, his burden is easy and light. And Jesus will, find, will provide rest for your souls. And I think that that's something that we can say Hosanna about. Amen? We can say praise the Lord because Jesus offers a different way to live and he's offering that to us today. All we have to do is accept so I ask you this morning if that's what you feel God is putting on your heart. You're ready to lay that burden aside and take up the easy yoke, take up the new way to live. The easier way to live, it's not going to be easy per se in the level of difficulty. But it's going to be better for your life because Jesus is walking beside you. If you want that this morning, I invite you to sing along with our praise team as they lift up the song, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, because of what Jesus has done for us. I see the King of glory.
things to note before you head out today. We have the opportunity to continue to support Elevate and Young Adult Ministries here at the King Church. So I want to put up on the screen our Venmo QR code, and you can also head on over to AdventistGiving.org. I'll leave that up there for a moment. If any of you want to scan that, if you feel impressed upon your heart to give your tithes and offerings, do that. Thank you for supporting what goes on here. Um, your offering helped make sure everybody's got some cool masks this morning. So, you know, um, we're trying to do some things to make sure that you feel loved and you feel welcome in this space. Um, and if digital currency isn't your thing and you still write checks, no shame, I still do it too sometimes. Uh, if you've got cash, you can go ahead and put those in the boxes as you leave today. And uh, just know, if you wanted to come to Elevate specifically, uh, find a tithe envelope, which we should have some of those in there, and mark on it where you would like to designate those uh, monies to go. Uh, I always want to invite you, if you want to engage with us during the week, you can follow uh, Elevate on Instagram at, at thisiselevatetx, uh, where we post some extra content, some questions. We want to engage with you during the week and just help you learn how to walk and live in the way of Jesus. And another way that you can engage with Elevate, we've got a podcast as well. It's called Elevate Retake, and hopefully we can put that one up on the screen. Uh, and we recap the messages that happen here. So if you miss something, you can go back and listen to it and also engage with it in a deeper way as well. So you can scan that code on the screen. Um, we're getting ready and working on our next season that's coming out on that. So I can't wait uh, for you to hear that. Uh, and I also want to remind you, right after our service today at 11.30, I know this was like 25 minutes ago that we talked about it, but 11.30 over at Moore Hall, which is the nursing building, which is in that general direction, uh, we're going to have a Bible study time. So we invite you to come out for that, 1130 over in Moore Hall, the nursing building on Southwestern Adventist University's campus. Uh, it's not just for university students. Anybody is welcome to come on over. Uh, we just ask that you continue to abide by the physical distancing and the mask wearing that covers your nose and your mouth on that. So does that sound like a plan? Okay, a couple of you will be coming out. Thanks for, thanks for joining that. So here, here's where we leave off today. We've talked about the way of Jesus, right? The way of Jesus that he provides an easy yoke. Here's the cool thing about it. The, this easy yoke that he talked about, it popped up in scripture way before Jesus even talked about it in the book of Matthew. Uh, Exodus chapter 33, verse 14. Uh, this is God talking to Moses about how they're going to navigate the wilderness and how they're going to go into the promised land. He says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. How many of you this morning want the presence of God to go with you wherever you go? He already does, I guarantee it, but maybe you're not aware of it yet. So claim this promise this week. When you're feeling overwhelmed and burdened by what life has to offer and it's hit, hitting you down, say, no, God, you said your presence is going to go with me and you're going to provide rest. Then there's Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Stand by the ways and see and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your soul. All throughout scripture, there's a God 
who is calling us to follow after his ways. And when we do that, our soul, our innermost being, can find a rest that's sweeter than the sweetest night's sleep. It's better than the best vacation because you don't have to walk it alone. Jesus told us, said, hey, there's going to be trouble in this world. There's going to be things that are going to come your way. They're going to throw curveballs at you. Jesus, in this passage, he doesn't offer a way of escape. He doesn't say, here's the trap door that you can hop out of this world and into the next and everything's going to be okay. What he offers instead is equipment to bear the load. And it's custom fit for you and for you and for you and for you and for you, for everybody in this space and everybody that's following Jesus. So here's the thing. In this world, an easy life is not an option, full stop. You're already full aware, well aware of that, right? But the cool thing about it, that even though an easy yoke, or an easy life is not an option, an easy yoke is. So I invite you to come back next week. We're going to talk more about what that looks like practically. But I invite you to take up that yoke of Jesus. Spend some time this afternoon in Matthew chapter 11. Dig into the essence of rest, what God is calling us to live. And I encourage you this morning to pick up that easy yoke and to try the way of Jesus. And hope this morning that your answer to the engaged question, was it, what does it mean to rest? That maybe today you have a different answer leaving from this space. So there's the invitation. Take up the yoke of Jesus try the way of Jesus. I'd like to welcome you to stand with us for our last song. The face of the Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. Above all things, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is us forever from rising to the setting sun his love endures forever in the grace of God we will carry on his love endures forever sing praise sing this morning, but I needed that sermon. Come to me, all you who are weary and 
and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All God asks is for us to come to him, and we'll receive the rest that we need in him. Uh, our tradition here at Elevate is to say this blessing to close out our service. So if you all can repeat that with me. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning at Elevate. Everyone have a blessed Sabbath. Sing praise.